happy Friday. I'm Kaui Lucas here on Hawaii is my mainland every Friday, 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. This week, I have another engineering project. This one is really big. We had the little water wheel last week, but this week we have, I think, the biggest one ever, um, except for the rail. Um, and that is the three mile tunnel between Kaneohe to Kailua for wastewater. And with me today is the project manager, Don Painter, and Lori Kahikina, who is with the city and county of Honolulu. And she is head of the, she is the director of the environmental services. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And Don um, has managed to come to Hawaii and, and run some pretty big projects uh, a lot. You, you, you just mentioned that you've been here 50 times, not counting when you've been living here. That's a lot, Don. O only working here. <laughs> um, so give us a little background about how this, this technology is um, being used here. It's the first time that this tunnel boring machine has been used here and what this is going to do for us. The tunnel boring machine is actually a, a fairly small rock machine. Uh, it's a 13-foot diameter machine, and it basically bores a round tunnel. It is the largest bored tunnel on the island of Oahu, actually in the state of Hawaii. At this at this time, I'm sure there'll be more coming at some <laughs> point in time. Uh, it's a rock machine. It's called a main beam rock machine. It's manufactured by the Robbins Company of Solon, Ohio. Um, and the machine in, in and of itself is kind of a unique piece of mechanical equipment. It weighs about 300 tons, it's totally assembled, it's about 300 feet long, um, has about 2,500 horsepower that drives the cutter head support and all the backup behind that. Um, the machine has actually did perform very well here. We had some, some rock uh, that wasn't like we expected, but this machine could handle it and we went on through with it with the help of the NV and the City and County of Honolulu directors all. It's been, it's been a nice project. So um, this is a sizable project. I um, stated the number wrong on the, on the pre-show. It's 173. 173. 173 million dollar project. And Don, hats off. Evidently, you're on budget. I just want to say Thank you. Me too. Woohoo! Woohoo! It's possible. Well, it, it is, it is possible, possible, but it's taken a lot of work and a lot of team effort to do that. And um, in, anything you want to share about what that process was? I mean, how did you manage to do it? This is fabulous. The only thing I can add to that is a lot of hard work. And there again, it's been a team effort. It's not just been the contractor, it's been the owner, it's been the engineers, the designers. Uh, we've had our problems, as all projects do. But collectively, the team has managed to sort through the major part of those problems and keep everybody, I guess, a little bit friendly. <laughs> <laughs> have, have the problems been more um, management or technical or? Technical more than, and uh, some geotechnical problems and, and they, have, they have not been insurmountable. And it just takes a little bit of work to sort through them. So you're, you're digging a tunnel through, basically through the Oneava Hills um, from Kaneohe to Kailua. From Kailua to Kaneohe. Oh. The tunnel went uphill. The tunnel went uphill. Mm. Oh. Very small But the grade. name is, is very specifically Kaneohe to Kailua. Kaneohe, okay, but you, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. you actually dug the tunnel. Okay. Yes. So you started at the bottom and, or, and have finished the digging part. The tunnel is complete. That must have felt really good. It did. It's, 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 a credit, it's a credit to everybody involved with the tunnel. It's a lot of hard work. So, Lori, you're looking at it from the, the city's point yes. of view. And what, is, what has been your process in this? Um, like Don mentioned, it's been a team effort. We are going to be the owners of this tunnel once he's, he's completed it. And I just can't reiterate what he said. It's been a team effort. The contractor has been really good. They have... There have been a lot of hiccups along the way, but we've tried to work together as a team to keep the project moving along. And that it, there always are going to be. Absolutely. We all know that. Absolutely. It, it's the, it's the, the ability to, you know, power through yes. that and yes. come out with a good result 
that is is the really important thing and we just need more shining examples like this right. um, one of the things um, that is, we, well, we haven't talked about yet that what is this for? I'm not sure which one of you is the better to, to answer that, but um, how is the tunnel going to be used? I, I can answer that. So it is an EPA mandated project. That's in our consent decree. We do have to finish it by a certain time. It will transport the flows all the way from Kaneohe to our Kailua treatment plant. And originally we were going to build a force main. We have an existing force main, which is a um, pressurized pipe. So we push the the wastewater under pressure from Kaneohe to Kailua. Um, I think everyone remembers the beach walk when that force main broke, 48 million gallons of water spills into Waikiki. Kaneohe Bay is right there. So we were actually going to do, per our consent decree, a force main through Kaneohe Bay. But we knew that was environmentally, um, culturally very sensitive area. So we renegotiated with EPA to build this gravity tunnel. So under gravity, instead of pressurized pipe, that flow will come from Kaneohe to Kailua. It gives us extra capacity, so we don't have to build holding tanks on the Kaneohe side because somehow the rainwater gets into our system and it shouldn't. But when it does, like this last heavy rains, you know, our flows double, quadruple to what it's usually at. So we need to store that flow until the, the treatment plant can handle taking it. Okay, so the when it when it rains, it's the water that come, seeps into the sewage mm -hmm. yes, system, yes. and that's what's pressurized. And so, when you looked at, are we going to put this underneath the the bay? Was that going to be using uh, one of these uh, machines also, or it, it would have used one of the machines? But uh, you know, the foresight that that the owners had on this of taking it under the bay. Anytime you take any type of wastewater underneath the main body of water you there's some problems that might seem insurmountable at the time and can be insurmountable like Lori mentioned that all you need is one break and yeah it's very difficult to get back to it the alignment of this is probably the best absolute way they could do it and and even then on a on a gravity feed system i think mayor caldwell's mentioned it numerous times that the reduction in power they don't have to run the pumps to pump this it all flows naturally it flows naturally down towards uh, Kailua, but in our conversation yesterday, didn't you say that there's you have to pump it back up for treatment? Then it comes to a pump station, but you don't have the pumps along the alignment that are working all the time to keep the lines pressurized. You only have really basically one set of pumps to take all of this water to the treatment process. And how? What is the? How far is the t treatment process from the? from where the tunnel is. I mean, what is that? It's right in the middle it's, of it. It's right at the plant. It's right it's in the right plant. It's right at the plant. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. so it's not much just pumping at all. It correct. Oh, yeah. it's wow, basically awesome. a, It's basically a 67-foot vertical yes. pump. Right. 67-foot vertical pump. Maybe now it's a good time to, to look at some of the pictures of this because the, the scale is, is pretty, pretty awesome. So that was, this is the, the, the route. The actual alignment, yes. Three miles. Okay, and it, I'm trying to um, picture where that where the Kailua is that the top right of the screen is the Kailua Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant. Okay. Where the effluent will come from I, Kaneohe. There I you Kahi, go. Why I call he elementary? I call he uh, shopping center. Uh huh. Oh, that's what you're calling the Kailua site. That's the Kailua that's treatment plant. Oh, okay. And the Kaneohe pre-treatment facility is by the Bayview Golf Course. Ah, right, right. <laughs> Right, right, right. Okay. Pool, Pool Hollow School on mm -hmm. one corner and Baby right. Golf Course on the other. Right. The old one is where that fish pond, I've wiped yes. a fish pond. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. yes. I've exactly. pulled mangroves out of that place. Yes. <laughs> They're good neighbors. Um, <laughs> so this is um, under some, pro some like, hills. It's mountains. It's it a lot of pressure. So how does this the Does flow, the, the, the elevation change from Kaneohe to Kailua is very marginal. It, it, the elevation and the grade, it's about a 35-foot vertical drop from the Kaneohe site to the Kailua site, which is an engineered hydraulic function that, you know, the water can't go too fast and this and that. So basically, when the, the tunnel will store about 8 million gallons so that Lori's plant operators can meter that into the plant so that they can go and stay within their guidelines on the plant take this water when we can treat it if it's under a under duress and backed up then basically he says stop 
I'll treat what I can, then I'll take this this rest of this out of out of the pump station when I can and meter it through. So to say that she would treat all eight million gallons in one day, it wouldn't happen. It would be over a, sp a span of numerous days, number of days. How, how many days would that take? I'm not sure what that. And, and that's it a depends how much flow comes yeah. in. That's a function of, of the flows yeah. that they have and, and the capacity of the plant. Okay. So I had said that um, Carl Kim was chatting with me uh, a few weeks ago on the show, and he had mentioned this project, which is one reason I looked you up. And then it really came uh, to the front because I walked down to Kailua Beach after Tropical Storm Darby. Ah, I can't even go swimming. Oh. Um, but you said that... Um, this will help, but maybe not that kind of wastewater. So we want to um, have some clarity on that. Um, right, so there's two different systems. There's the stormwater system and the sewer systems, two completely separate sets of pipes. So the sewer system is supposed to be totally enclosed. So anything from your toilets, your sinks, your washing machines, that all goes into the sewer system, comes to our plant, and we treat it, and then it goes out into the ocean. The storm drains, that's all of the streams feed into it, the uh, off the roads, the gutters, all of that goes into a separate set of pipes. It's not treated and it goes straight into the ocean. But somehow there's either there's cross connections or people are popping our manholes, letting the rainwater get in, or their rain gutters are connected directly to our sewers. Somehow that stormwater is getting into our system to the point of like our sand island treatment plant normally we pump 67 million gallons per day this last storm over the weekend we went over 220. Wow. so we're quadrupling what our normal flow is because all this extra rainwater is getting in so when you refer to kylo beach being um it's all brown that's that's really all the runoff from the the streams the rivers all feeding into the straight into the ocean it's not treated so the, uh, our system, but building a tunnel would not help in this case because it's completely separate. Um, I'm just wondering, does the EPA have any problem with that? Yeah, I think that's um, nationwide. They're going. They're probably going to start focusing more. It was easy to target the treatment plants because everything feeds into one point and um, enters one point. So it's easier to focus on us. Okay, get you guys under control. And now. This is a major problem that's probably going to be their next uh, focus because it, right now it, it doesn't feed nicely into a treatment plant. It goes all the way up to tributary up into the islands and there is multiple owners. The federal owns land, the state, private owners all feed into these streams which eventually leads to the ocean. So how do you regulate that as a regulator? So. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Let's take a break and think about it and come back and maybe answer it. <laughs> Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Thanks for watching Think Tech this summer. We have a lot of terrific shows of great importance, and I hope you'll watch my show too every Tuesday at noon as we address sustainability issues for Hawaii. They're really pertinent as the World Conservation Congress approaches in September and the World Youth Congress that's focusing on sustainability next year as well. Have a great summer and tune in at noon every Tuesday. I think we had a whole, the whole robotics Welcome team. back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawe Lucas and with me here today is Lori Kahikina from the city and county, I always get this wrong, Director of Environmental Services and Don Painter, who has just finished pouring, gosh, I wonder how many ga uh, uh, pounds of concrete are um, creating a three-mile tunnel under the Oneaba Hills um, to um, safeguard our wastewater. Well, the concrete hasn't been, but right now the backfill in the tunnel will be just in the pipe, the 10-foot diameter hole boss pipe. There's 26,000 yards that will go in there. 26,000 yards. So you took a lot of material out we did. And um, I heard that there was something 
there was something really useful. I'm, I'm sorry, we didn't talk about this before. That's fine. <laughs> um, but I, I did run into somebody who has said, wow, this was a great um, working together. We took the stuff and, and then we filled in. What, what, what was that story? We, we actually uh, did some fills on the island. We also took some of the really good rock out of the tunnel and it went to a major concrete supplier here on the island. Beautiful. And they recycled it. Beautiful. Uh, really nice. Really nice. I love to see that kind of synergy. And speaking of which, you had, um, there were some pictures of some very cute kids from Aikahi Elementary that the robotics team, they got to, um, they got to be part of this. Well, how did that happen? Well, they're actually good neighbors of ours, or maybe we're not so good neighbors of theirs. We have <laughs> odors, and so um, whenever we have a major project, we try to keep the, the school abreast of what's going on. And when our contractor came in, they have that big tunnel boring machine. I think you have pictures of it. And the robotics team was allowed to come up with the name for the machine. So I'm not exactly sure how. I don't know if the multiple students turned in different names, but they came to us and said we settled on Pohakulani. Oh, that's As beautiful. It is beautiful. Oh, so wow. they were there for the blessing, right? They, they came were, for, they the were for the blessing, and they also talked at length with the mayor. Yes. Yes, and their so, parents got to come. So. Yeah. The only caveat with with naming the machine, um, and this this comes from the industry, the tunneling industry, it has to be a female name. <laughs> okay, well we won't tell him that, will we, uh, Lori? That Hawaiian names are gender neutral. <laughs> <laughs> but the students, the students came in with all of this, and we we were bound by our our promise to the students. Yeah. <laughs> So this is, seems to be working really remarkably well on so many levels uh, in, in the community that I couldn't help, you know, especially with um, Carl Kim's suggestion of, well, you know, we have that rail thing. And the last time we looked at tunneling was um, a long time ago before the uh, technology is what it, what it is today. And I know this isn't what your job is about, and I know that you're not giving any kind of approval. But I just want to explore the idea of using this technology and some other projects uh, around. And rail is just such a big one. We have to talk about it. I mean, if it's, <laughs> if it's silly, <laughs> it's silly. <laughs> but um, uh, what about it? Is it possible to, to, to bring one of these machines and, and, and bore through um, uh, downtown Honolulu without disrupting everything? The, the question you always answered with, answer that question with is can that tunnel be built of course it can but how much is it going to cost uh, and there's a, a lot of a lot of people say well they built a tunnel here that was good for them but there's years of planning and design and, and geotechnical investigations and everything to make it the best possible way so looking at a transit tunnel I've built transit tunnels I built highway tunnels yes it can be built but are, is is the public and the taxpayer and the the residents do they want to absorb that cost a lot of times the reason light rail goes underground or transit goes underground because it's a maintenance consideration it's very easy maintenance under there it's not exposed to the elements the weather but there again it's it's a higher cost per mile higher cost per mile generally yes generally mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the nice thing about the tunnel is less invasive to the community, the area. It's like a, like a sewer tunnel. I, there's people in Kailua still, we've been building for two and a half years now, there's people in Kailua that still don't even know a tunnel's going Correct. on there. Correct. Which is what we like. We <laughs> like to be under the radar. Well, Don just hit it right there on the head. So this tunnel, just the tunnel portion, $175 million. And we are planning on building one in the Ala Moana section to take the Waikiki flows through downtown, that's going to cost about six hundred fifty million dollars. So that's from for how, from how far? Waikiki from like the the Ala Moana side of Waikiki. Yes, to Ala Moana, the Goban building. You're talking about six hundred fifty million dollars. So that's wow, going to be. That's not very far. It's not very far. That's like maybe a mile, not even. Yeah, it's not very far. So six hundred. About six hundred fifty million dollars. I mean, we're adding capacity in that area. Um, maybe a little bit further. Maybe uh, from Beachwalk. I should say from Beachwalk. It's in Waikiki, but it's not much. It's not m as far as miles go. 
So you're talking 650 million, so that's exactly what Don said. I know in the past it was talked about underground rail, but it's, it's easier to construct something above ground, so it's a little bit cheaper, but I think we would all love it underground, right? You know, we don't have this concrete well, and yet, plate, right? Plate I'm looking at it. Plate. Doing the math, okay, that's interesting. Six hundred and fifty million to go. Uh, if it's from Beachwalk, that's that's a mile and a half. Mm -hmm. Maybe two. Maybe two. Maybe two. Okay. Yeah. So compared to um, five billion for four and a half more <laughs> miles, I don't know. I don't know. It's a diameter. It's a diameter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's not including stations and everything, but um, true. It, um, y you talked about how there was a, a, a life cycle cost analysis done and that that's how um, this machine was chosen as, as a, a way of doing that. And I was, I'm just wondering about, is, is that being done on these um, other projects too? Is it being included? Is it a choice? Unfortunately, we don't have a metric for how awful and disruptive it is. We don't have a dollar value. And I think that now that everybody's had um, uh, the experience of, of the rail being above ground, and, and then Kailua folks not even knowing <laughs> years that they have a completed project, I mean, there's something about that. There's one of the things that has to be interesting, and then you asked early on about the different configurations of machines. There are machines that'll that'll tunnel through mud, water, bad ground. There's different configurations of machines, and part of the part of the selection for the machine for the project is a very intense geotechnical investigation, and it has and it's geotechnical investigations are good or they're bad. So if if there's a bad one, and you select the machine or the owner uh, has a prescriptive type of machine they want for it, you, you take the machine and it doesn't work, then there's a lot of people that suffer for that. So the money up front that's spent on underground, um, I'm, a, I'm a, only because I'm in the business, I'm a proponent of underground. Power lines, uh, sewers, everything should be underground, mm -hmm. less invasive to the environment. But there's a cost associated with all of that. Uh, for example, right now, Alaskan Way in Seattle are building the big viaduct underneath the viaduct if you've been to Seattle. And it's going to be rail and, and truck traffic. It's a 58-foot diameter machine, and they are Ooh. basically mining in glacial till and rubbish and mud and clay. And this machine is doing well. It's about 18,000 feet, I think, total. But this machine is doing it. So you design or, and select a machine for the ground conditions. But the start of that is, is what does Lori want for her plant? So we've got to say, okay, we need this kind of capacity. We need this. And I want a 10-foot diameter tunnel. I want a 30-foot diameter tunnel. So the geotechnical investigation takes care of that. Well, this rock's really good here, but this rock here is really bad. So what type of machine are we going to design for this? Machines are generally, if you just put a hard number on it, about a million and a half dollars per foot of diameter machine is what they cost. <laughs> that's just to buy it. That's not to, that's not to use the machine and, and, and drive it. So what does it run on? Just electric, electrical and hydraulics, electrical or hydraulic. Uh, there's this particular machine, and, and I think uh, Mayor Caldwell told, told him one day he was standing by the hydraulic tank. The machine actually cycles 840 gallons of hydraulic oil a minute just to run the machine. <sighs> so if you break one of those hoses, it's not very nice. Oh. So, Lori, yeah. uh, I assume then um, you're busy doing studies for this, um, uh, the hydrology studies that um, Don was mentioning um, in Waikiki now? Uh, we just started, we just put the money in our FY fiscal year 17 funds for the planning. So it hasn't even gone out to a consultant yet. That is not a consent decree project, but we just felt, you know, there's all of the construction, all the buildings going up in that area. There are some places we have capacity problems we better really think about um, building a tunnel there and how this project came about actually is it's kind of funny i just told the mayor about it in a you know private meeting that you know we're thinking of doing another big tunnel over the waikiki side you know from beach walk to ala Moana, get rid of those pump stations get rid of those force mains within a week we were giving a speech at a engineering you know f function <laughs> and he gets on stage and he goes yeah 
and the city's going to do and there's large tunnels like oh no <laughs> so we can thank the mayor for it it really does make sense though but I'll I, I think it makes sense. so much sense can you just have another chat with him please <laughs> <laughs> no so he, he uh, agreed to put the money in our fiscal 17 the council has already approved it so we will be procuring a consultant to do the planning part of that project. Well, I'm, I'm just really <coughs> wanting to open up the discussion a little. I know, um, you know, there's been decades of back and forth studies done, but when when there's a substantial success using a technology that hasn't been used before, it just seems that it would be worth it to to revisit it. Oh, um, are you meaning? Maybe rail underground. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We should oh. leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe from Middle Street. <laughs> <laughs> well, that you know, that's what that's what was Car was Carl was saying. He said, you know, I I know they do it in other places, and he he loves Portland. You 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 worked on mm -hmm. the Portland one. Um, and, I was a project manager on the light rail tunnel in Portland. Yes. You know, I I just can't help wanting it to happen. But at least. Um, uh, the studies that you're doing now for the for the wastewater will get more information yes. Yes. about the possibilities, maybe yes. further down the That's line. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. There's um, um, another um, uh, poss other possible uses that you're you're looking at for this um, the okay. tunneling. Um, are you? I think down the road, and I think Lori mentioned before, CSO is a big thing. You walking on Kailua Beach, seeing not not a nice place. So at so, at some point in time, you can all the big a lot of the big cities on the mainland. Uh, I've worked on Milwaukee, Chicago, Atlanta. Uh, they're all CSO programs now. Big tunnels, big treatment plants. And CSO again is combined sanitary. sanitary, sanitary okay, combined. which would actually do something about. The, the stormwater runoff. It would, but it's a different design altogether. Well, we <laughs> are money. We are in our, our last minute here oh. on Hawaii is my mainland already. I know, can you believe it? <laughs> thank you both so much for coming and talking to me and thank you for doing such an excellent job. <laughs> Thanks thank for you. having us. Thank you.